Welcome everyone, this is tutorial number 6, I hope all of you are in good health. In this video I am going to discuss the trip distribution and trip assignment. The second example here talks about trips distribution. Th that was discussed also in tutorial number 5, the uniform growth factor method assumes that the origin destination matrix increases with the same growth factor. In this example, we are given four zones, four origins, and four zones as destinations. We are also given the current trips and the target tier trips for both destination and origin. We need to distribute these trips using the double constrained method using only two iterations. Please remember that this, this example was discussed also in tutorial number 5. This slide here explains what are the givens while using the double constrained method. So we have the Bayesian matrix, we have the total produce and attract, attracted trips per zone at target here. And we are given the number of iterations to be 2 instead of 3. So the basic idea here is that we will add a new column for the difference and another one for the factor. And our aim here is to decrease this difference as possible as we can. How did we calculate the difference? The difference is the target minus the current. And this factor, we can obtain it when we divide the target over the current. Of course, we will cal calculate the factor for the next rows. So the, fa the factor here will be 1510 divided by 810 and so on for the next cells. This is origin based. What we have done here in the base is origin based. Iteration step one, we will consider our origin based matrix when we multiply it with the factor to be our base matrix. What I mean here is that this 234.64 is obtained when we multiply the 150 multiplies its growth factor 1.56 and so on for the next cells. And this time we will calculate the difference and the factor considering the destination. So it means that it is destination based. This will be iteration 1, step 1. This is also an illustrative slide on how to calculate using the double constraint factor. So in iteration 1, step 1, we will calculate the factor considering the destination this time. So the factor, which is 0 0.8, is calculated when we divided the target by the current. And the difference also target minus current. We will do the same for the next columns. This factor this time in iteration 1 step 1 is destination based. Because, because we calculated this factor considering the destination, not the origin as in the previous slide. We will take the new matrix when we apply the factors here. So the 187 is the result of 0 0.8 multiplies 234. And the same is done for the next cells. This will be our base matrix this time, iteration 1, step 2. We will get the factor from the origin. So it is origin based factor. And the same applies as shown in the previous slide and in iteration 1 step 1 when we are going to stop when we reach 2 iterations the number of iterations will be given in the exam now in iteration 2 step 1 we will get the factor from the destination so this factor 0 0.75 is calculated when we divided 1150 target divided by the current and the difference 
which is the target minus the current. In iteration two, step two, we will get the factor from the origin. So how can we obtain this value 187.97? It is the resultant of 0 0.75 multiplies 250.38. You will get 187 and you will do the same for the next matrix cells. This is an illustrative slide. It tells us how to calculate the difference. The difference is the target minus the current and the growth factor is the target divided by the current. Example number three in this tutorial talks about the model split. We also discussed this topic in tutorial number five. In the model split, we have a number of trips that we need to distribute over different transport modes using some models, N-way or added mode structure or the hierarchical structure. And this equation here is used to calculate the proportion of trips done by each mode. In this example, we're given this number of trips that we need to distribute over those five transport modes using the N-way structure method so that the trips are evenly distributed over the modes using this utility function, which is 10 minus 0.05 multiplies time minus 0.3 multiplies cost. And we have the time travel time and the cost for each transport mode. This example here shows the N-way structure. So if we have three modes, the trips will be evenly distributed over them. Okay, now we are going to calculate the utility value for each mode of transport. If you consider the passenger car using this utility function, 10 minus 0.05 multiplies 30, which is the travel time minus 0.3 multiplies 40, will give us negative 3.5. We will calculate e power u of i, e power negative 3.5 is 0.030197 here, as shown here in this table. The proportion of trips done by passenger cars is equal to e power u of i. We are going to apply this equation here, e to the power u of i for passenger, passenger cars, which is 0.030197 divided by the sum of all e power u for all transport modes. Of course, you are going to repeat the, those steps for different modes of transport. So for the taxi, you will replace this 30 by 35 and this 40 by 70 to get negative 12.75. And you will calculate the e power u of i to get 2.9 multiplies 10 for negative 6. And you will also calculate the proportion of trips done by taxi, which is 5.77 times 10 to the power negative 10. And what we need at the end is to get the number of trips done by each mode. So in order to get this 0 0.144, you will multiply 6 times 10 to the power negative 6, multiplies the total number of trips, which is given by 24,000 trips. The same is done for the next transport modes. Here, for example, for the bus, you will multiply 0 0.02956 multiplies 24,000 to get 709.44. Of course, if, if you sum all these proportions, you should get one. And also, if you, su if you sum all number of trips, you will get the original value, which is 24,000 trips. Okay. As all of you know that the transport model is a four-stage model. So our fourth stage is the traffic assignment. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss only the all or nothing assignment, which is the simplest route choice me method with the minimum cost. And by minimum cost, we mean not actual cost, but the network cost 
maybe time or speed or actual cost Example number four in this tutorial talks about the trip assignment. We are given this network which consists of three zones A, B and C and we are also given this origin destination matrix. We need to assign those trips according to the all or nothing method based on the travel time. And of course when we use this all or nothing method we are looking for the minimum travel time or the route which has the minimum travel time between A and B and between A and C and the time here is written on each link those links are bidirectional they have two lanes in each direction and the capacity of each lane is 1200 passenger car unit per hour per lane and finally we will mark the congested links if there are congested links Okay, the basic idea here, we will assign the trips based on the minimum cost, and this cost is given to be the time. We will represent the first route from zone A to zone B, and we will add the origin destination pair flow of it, which was given 700. And we will also represent the route from zone A to zone C, as you will see in the next slide. We will combine both routes in one graph. And we will mark the congested links. That is the sequence of the solution. Okay, now we need to know why did we choose this route from A to B and this route from A to C. Remember that we are calculating based on the minimum travel time. So if you add this route here from A to B, it has 10 plus 12, 22 plus 5, 27 plus 3, which is 30 minutes. However, if you used this one, 3 plus 5 is 8 plus 6, 14 plus 5, 19. So this route is 30 minutes, this route is 19 minutes. If you kept doing these simulations and choosing many routes to go from A to B you will find out that this route has the minimum travel time so this is the solution for the first route and of course don't forget to put the origin destination trips here on each link from A to C we knew that from point A to this point you have to use this path and that was obvious okay what about from this point to point number c three plus five here is eight three plus five plus six is fourteen so here we have fourteen minutes if you take this route fourteen plus five is nineteen plus four is twenty three if you take this one it is 14 plus 8 is uh, 22 if you take this one it's 14 plus 14 it is 28 so from the beginning if I want to take this one let's calculate the time 3 plus 10 is 13 plus 2 is 12 plus 9 is 21 plus 7 is 28 so what about this route 10 plus 12 22 plus 5 27 plus 3 30 plus 4 34 so the minimum travel time here for from zone a to zone c is this route and also do not forget to put the trips here on each link and finally combine both routes together in one network here as shown so now we need to mark the congested links here they are marked in red how did we know that these red links are congested if you remember from the previous slide they had a, a demand of 2800 passenger cars per hour per lane 
we need to compare this demand with the capacity we are given the capacity of one lane is 1200 and the one direction has two lanes multiplies two so the capacity of one direction only is 2400 passenger cars per hour per lane so the capacity here is less than the demand which will cause congestion in these red links thank you very much and stay safe